Hi everyone, my name is Donald, and today I'm excited to present our work on WASMK, an extension to WebAssembly adding support for delimited continuations. So prior to the introduction of WebAssembly, JavaScript was used as a compilation target for a variety of high-level languages, such as C and Go. This enabled web developers to create web apps in the language of their choice and enabled further code reuse. However, the performance of JavaScript was a bit unpredictable. So WebAssembly was introduced as an alternative compilation target. Since then, WebAssembly has been adopted by all the major web browsers. The promise of WebAssembly is to offer fast and consistent performance, as well as a small code size footprint. C has been able to take advantage of the performance of WebAssembly. But unlike C, Go features both garbage collection and go routine slash stream threads. Neither of these features can be compiled to efficient WebAssembly code. So the performance and code size of Go currently suffers significantly when compiled to WebAssembly. But fortunately, an extension proposal to add garbage collection to WebAssembly is currently in progress. However, the compilation of green threads remains unaddressed. We solve this problem by introducing WASMK, our extension to WebAssembly, which adds support for delimited continuations. In addition, we prototype a language CK, which is C extended with continuations, as well as a compiler from CK to WASMK. Using embedded green threads in CK as an example, we show that green threads can be compiled to efficient WASMK code. Combined with the garbage collection extension to WebAssembly, we look forward to efficient compilation of Go in the future. I'm excited to first talk through an, an introduction to the compilation of C and Go to current WebAssembly, and after that, introduce the design of WASMK. So let's start out with a brief review of WebAssembly by actually looking at a warm-up exercise of how to compile C to WebAssembly. So I'll go through some of the main features of C, shown in green on the left, and we'll look at how to compile these to the features that WebAssembly provides, shown in blue in the middle column. So if we start with expressions, compiling expressions is pretty straightforward because WebAssembly is actually a stack machine. So that means that we can just compile rec recursively the left operand and the right operands of an expression in C to WebAssembly code. And then after that, we just have to output the correct WebAssembly instruction for that C operator. Local variables in C are easy to compile because WebAssembly actually provides a notion of functions and local variables. And finally, function calls in C translate directly to function calls in WebAssembly. So one important thing to keep in mind is where everything will be placed onto hardware during runtime. Even though WebAssembly is a stack machine, the formal stack will be register allocated, with spillage going to the machine stack as needed. Now finally, let's take a quick look at malloc. So things that we malloc, those need to be put somewhere into heap space. They can't be stored into the WebAssembly formal stack, nor can they be stored in, in WebAssembly local variables. So instead, WebAssembly provides a notion of a heap via what it calls linear memory, which is essentially a huge, like, byte addressable table, and WebAssembly provides instructions for you to read and write from that table. And at runtime, this is just going to be some huge chunk of, of memory on the machine. The other thing we need to know how to compile is when you have a pointer to a local variable. So let's say we have this function f with a local variable x and a function called to g where we pass a pointer to x. Normally, we would compile this by placing x in a WebAssembly local variable. However, this won't work because in WebAssembly, there's no instruction that lets you do an indirect read or write to a local variable on the WebAssembly formal stack. So instead, we need to place s into linear memory. The trick is to take all of linear memory and dedicate a portion of linear memory to be a so-called shadow stack. And in the prologues and epilogues of functions, we can actually push and pop from this shadow stack in linear memory as we need to, to place variables that we take pointers to into the shadow stack. So the diagram ends up looking like this, where we usually compile C local variables to WebAssembly local variables, which will then often be allocated to machine registers. But if a address is taken of the C local variable, then we have to take an alternate path where we compile it to live in the shadow stack and linear memory of WebAssembly. So with the warm-up exercise of compiling C to WebAssembly complete, let's instead take a look at compiling Go to WebAssembly. 
So let's say we have the Go code on the left. We first initialize the local variable s, and then we have an infinite loop where we increment s and then call the function f of s. So let's take the strategies that we learned from C and try to, try to apply them here. So to compile the first line inside the loop, what we can do is we can push the value of the local variable s onto the stack, push 1 onto the stack, perform an add operation, and then take that result and use it to update the variable s. Then the second line we can compile by pushing the value of s onto the stack and then calling the function f. This would seem to be good. However, there's this problem, which is that in Go, every time you do a function call, you are potentially triggering a go routine slash green thread to yield. So that means that we need a way to actually be able to switch to a whole new stack for a thread that for a different thread that we are switching to. And in particular, this presents the the specific problem that if we're about to switch to a new stack for a different thread, we also need a way to back up and, and save the value of the local variable s so that it doesn't get lost during the thread switch. So this won't quite do, but we can actually take the idea that we learned from c of the shadow stack and we can apply it here. So what we can actually do is we can mirror the entire call stack entirely in the shadow stack in linear memory. So specifically, right before we do the function call, we also have to emit some code in which we save the value of s into the shadow stack in linear memory. Okay, and then we do the function call. The function call itself might actually do a thread switch and switch to a different shadow stack in linear memory, which we can do because we have full control over linear memory. And then at some point, once we return back here, we can then restore the value of the local variable s by restoring it from the shadow stack. So in Go, that means that every temporary expression, every local variable, all have to be saved into linear memory. This is in contrast to C, where it was just a very local operation where only sp some very specific local variables had to be saved into li linear memory. So the key problem here is that Go needs a way to manipulate the stack, but WebAssembly disallows manipulating the formal stack, which forces Go to instead manipulate everything within linear memory. So in this work, the solution that we've created is to start with WebAssembly and build an extension, WASMK, in which we add in a small set of stack manipulation instructions. Compilers such as the Go compiler can emit these instructions, which will then, at runtime, mutate the formal stack on your behalf. In addition to presenting WASMK, we also present a language CK, which is a weird extension to C, which essentially adds support for first-class continuations to C. And we present CK to give a case study for how to effectively target WASMK in a compiler. So let's take a closer look at what exactly these stack manipulation functions and instructions are that we added to CK and to WASMK. We have added five instructions to WebAssembly. The control, restore, and continuation delete instructions provide support for one-shot continuations. Continuation copy instruction adds support for multi-shot continuations. And then the prompt instruction adds support for delimited continuations. So before talking about the formal semantic design of WASMK, we'll first go through a number of examples in CK to get an intuition for how these extensions work. The first example is implementing green threads in CK using control and restore. This example will be familiar for people who know of cooperative threads from Scheme with call CC. So on the right, we have the user of a green threading library and the user calls the thread yield function in order to switch threads. Let's look at how it works. So the thread yield function calls a special control function provided by CK. What this will do is it will capture the current continuation of this thread and call the yield handler function passing that continuation in as the first argument in K. Yield handler will then insert this continuation into the thread queue and then pop something else out of the queue and 
call the special CK function restore to jump execution back to that other continuation. Both control and restore take an additional second argument. The second argument to restore is familiar from call CC in scheme. This is the value which will be substituted back in where the continuation was captured at the control site. The second argument to control is a bit different. It will be passed directly as the second argument to the, in this example, yield handler function. There will be more details about this in the second example. The next example shows how to build generators in CK. This is again familiar to generators in Scheme using call CC. So the client code on the right sets up a generator which will yield all of the natural numbers. Let's look at how the gen yield function works. So the gen yield function, it will first save the value that we want to yield into this generator struct G, and then it will capture the current continuation and call the control handler. Since we pass G as the second argument to control, this struct will be passed on directly to the yield handler function. The yield handler function then saves the continuation we've just captured into that struct, and then it will restore the continuation that was previously captured from the main function. Note that the value that we want to restore is passed as the second argument to restore. So that will be sent back to the main function. There are two important differences here from scheme though. First, we have the second argument to the control function. This is necessary because unlike scheme, WebAssembly does not support closures. So effectively, the second argument to control, in this case, this generator struct, is the closure environment that you would obtain after doing closure conversion. Secondly, we have this issue with this code, which is that after the for loop in the main function finishes executing, we will have actually leaked a stack, which was captured inside of the example generator function, but was never restored to. In order to free that, we actually need to call this special continuation delete function provided by CK. This is never needed in scheme due to garbage collection. The final example shows how to build a probabilistic programming language embedded in C++. In order to simulate sampling from a distribution, we need to be able to re-execute a captured continuation multiple times. To do this, we have to use the special continuation copy function provided by CK. So to start discussing the formal semantics of WASMK, let's think about where to save the captured stacks. As we've seen, WebAssembly has a notion of linear memory, so we might be tempted to save the captured stacks there. However, this would be unsafe as that would then allow user programs to overwrite arbitrary bytes of the captured stacks, violating type safety. Instead, we introduce a new table called the continuation table, which you interact with via the control and restore instructions. The semantics of WebAssembly are given via a small step reduction semantics between a store s, local variables vl star, and a stack. So to give the semantics of control, what we do is we first capture the stack via the evaluation context lmats. We then store the stack in the store s prime in a free index in the continuation table. This index is k. We then take this index k that we stored it at, along with the arbitrary user given argument v, and we then call the handler function h in a brand new fresh empty stack. The semantics of restore are opposite in a sense. In restore, we are given an index k into the continuation table. What we do is we then look up that continuation at that index, and we restore that to be the active stack. We also mark that spot in the continuation table as free. To visualize what this looks like, we have an active stack, which is being currently evaluated, and we have a continuation table. When we do a control instruction, we take this active stack and we store it away into some free spot in the continuation table, and we switch to a new fresh stack. Then later, when we do a restore instruction, we take the previously saved stack in the continuation table and we move it back to be the active stack. The semantics of continuation copy and continuation delete, however, are significantly simpler as they do not change the 
active stack around at all. They simply perform operations on the continuation table, that is, either copying or freeing something from the table. A crucial property of WebAssembly to maintain is safety, and in particular, we must maintain safety in the presence of bidirectional foreign function calls between WebAssembly code and code in the host language. Consider the example shown here. Suppose that we have foo rust, main wasm, bar rust, and bad wasm on the active stack. We then capture this continuation into the table, switch to new stack, and then we copy the continuation we just captured. Then at this point, we restore one of the copies, and we finish executing bad wasm, and then we finish executing bar rust. Then we restore the other copy from the table. We finish executing bad wasm again, and then we finish executing bar rust again. The danger here is that the prolog of bar rust executed once, while the epilog executed twice. In Rust, for example, this could cause double free bugs. The solution in WASMK is to add support for delimited continuations via a prompt instruction and to enforce implicit prompt instructions at every FFI call boundary. This will ensure that no foreign stack frame is duplicated or skipped during execution. The entire semantics of WASMK fit on one slide, including prompts and type checking. Please see our paper for more details about the mechanism of prompts and for proofs of type safety. Finally, we've also implemented WASMK as a fork of the WASM time JIT runtime for WebAssembly. This implementation is available at the paper's website shown here. Thank you for your time, and we are now happy to take your questions.